I was hoping there'd be more algae. I'm a little disappointed. Every day, every night, I'll be sleeping with this hat on. Thank you, Greg. We are going to build a pondless waterfall. The best way to learn anything is to teach it. We are rocking and rolling on this pond. Hey, I'm here with my good friend Jack. I told you we were going to do something special. Jack, why are we back here? Man, how insanely lucky are we? We're in Texas, back at Matt Tide House, where we built that epic pond, dream, all that kind of stuff. Now, he's like, I don't have enough water features. I think I need something else. We're gonna be building a custom fountainscape with a piece that's very, very limited. There's only one of 13 in I the world it, that we got here. I think it's the last one to be installed. I have one. You still have one left? Yeah. Oh, don't tell anybody. <laughs> what are you gonna sell that for? I'm, I'm one. No. <laughs> <laughs> We're using the Aquascape Stack Slate, eight foot tall urn. This thing is a monster. We did three of these over at Aquascape headquarters. This one is gonna be the focal point of this feature. Then we're gonna take about 40 tons of gigantic <laughs> rocks and build a surround with some cool waterfalls, some bowls, a big thousand plus gallon reservoir. Just a statement piece so when you roll through the gates of the driveway, that thing just hits you in the face. It's gonna be awesome. Matt saw an old video of these big giant urns and he said, how do I get one of those? Well, Jack was able to get three of them when I brought them in from overseas and a few other ones kind of moved around the rest of the country. Jack said, well, I could ship one down to you and we came up with a spot for it and I think it's gonna look incredible right here. It's gonna be the first thing everybody sees when they pull up this driveway behind me. It's gonna really set off the house. It needs an eight foot urn because of the size of the house. It's gotta be to scale with everything. And then we've got these awesome, awesome folders that Matt's been bringing in a couple weeks. We're gonna do something cool with them and it's all gonna fit right there. So there's so much work that has to happen before we even get started here. We've got this all kind of leveled off. We're getting ready to lay out our reservoir. You can see those big rocks back behind me. Those are actually put in because we want to get the urn even higher than eight feet. We're pulling the bottom part of that urn off to do something different with it. I can't wait to show you that. But because we're pulling the bottom off and we want to build this up, we're going to build this up. We have to retain all of that soil back in there. Lots of stuff happening here. We'll end up having to get some big rocks out here in front. The urn's going to sit about here, kind of come up. And now we're getting ready to lay out our reservoirs. Pretty soon we're going to lay out our reservoir. We'll have 12 blocks going this way, three blocks going that way, two pump vaults sitting over there, one, two. All the plumbing should run inside the liner. The next step, lay out the reservoir. Hey guys, sorry for the interruption. You can see I'm back here in St. Charles, Illinois in our aqua garden. I've created quite a mess, but that's not why I actually interrupted your normally broadcasted television. You know what I'm talking about. It's because I wanted to show you guys something else that's currently happening right now. So come on, let's go figure out what I'm talking about. So yes, we have another project going on at the same time all of this other stuff is going on. But what's weird is Team Aquascape has nothing to do with it. You see, we work with collaborators, other content creators all over the country. Country. And content creators are constantly calling us because if you didn't know this, everybody wants a pond, they just don't know it yet. <laughs> well, a lot of these people know they want a pond, but the problem is, is there's only one Team Aquascape. So how do we possibly help all of these other content creators? It's with our certified Aquascape contractor network, our CAC. So we have CACs all over the country, all over the world, and anytime we can't do something, we can tap into those CACs and work with other content creators. So we tapped into our CAC network, we got Lamar Stampley, we got Dave blocks them from Charlotte area. We got Ben from Urban Rescue Ranch all working together, collaborating to put on, you know, I don't even know exactly what they're doing. I know it's for his animals, but I don't know much past that. I just thought it was important to put that in this episode because it is day in the life of Aquascape, right? And this is stuff that's happening all around us all the time. So Lamar, over to you, bud. What's up guys, Lamar Stampley here with Prairie Creek Ponds. We're down here in Waco, Texas with Ben from Urban Rescue Ranch and we're working on his pond here. The pond's already in. You can look at it right now. The water clarity is not what we really want it to be. So we're going to be installing a wetland filter and an intake bay to really up that water quality so Ben and his rescue ranch can have a really awesome pond. We'll be using it for doing a lot of things, but mainly the capybaras. We'll have a nice pond to swim in. We'll also be rescuing waterfowl when we start doing wildlife rehabs. Anything from egrets to even potentially ospreys that are injured or orphaned. Having a nice pond is the biggest thing that we need for that. So we're really thankful for you guys. We've been doing this for a while, but we've 
brought in the Masters, Pondscapes of Charlotte. We got Brad here and his dad and his team recording as well. So they're gonna take it to the next level for us. You wanna add anything, Brad? I think we're ready, let's go do it. Cool. There's our hole. It's gonna be about 1,200 gallons of water. We're setting the top of the aqua box about a foot lower than grade, which gives us more elevation to play with, plus a little bit more water storage. More importantly, aesthetically, it's gonna look a whole lot better. So the whole reservoir just looks sunken like it would be in nature. You can see some use some of the dirt over here to kind of start building up. For this area, all that's gonna to have to be compacted, probably pulled away. And then we still had all of this left over. So a big old pile of dirt. We'll get maybe that little tractor running at some point, and we'll start bringing that over to this area where we can accentuate maybe this berm just a little bit more. Uh, no need to haul it off site when we have a huge property like this. Next we're going to dig in our vaults. We got a smaller machine that'll make it easier to dig in those two vaults and get those recessed. You'll see what I'm talking about in two seconds. always the way. Thank God though, it's just in that last section. So that little area where Billy's busting that stuff out with the jackhammer is where the pump vaults have to go, where that little boot area sits. Thank God we hit it just in that spot. So we got 99% of our excavation done and just that little section has to be jackhammered out. So a little hold up, but no biggie. We're moving through it. As soon as we get that done, we'll get the fabric, the liner in here. We did get some sand delivered so we can backfill with sand and we'll go over all of that stuff here real soon with you. Kind of looks like he's meditating over there. But anyhow, that's a wrap for day one. We got our 1,200 gallon reservoir in. We got our liner and that kind of stuff. Tomorrow is going to be a big day. I'm looking forward to bringing you guys back tomorrow to just show you way more of the design. And so I think what I want to focus a lot on with this vlog is really just making sure you guys understand the thought process in the next four days. So you guys make sure you keep watching because tomorrow is going to be a great day. See you tomorrow. Bye. With this clay pond already holding water, but the water clarity was awful to be honest. So part of the aquascape ecosystem approach, two of them is mechanical and also biological filtration. So we have all these trees around. You can already see we got some leaves in there. So what we're gonna do is one, an intake bay, manually remove all of the leaves and debris that blow into the pond. So that's step one. That way those leaves don't break down and produce a whole bunch of algae. Then we have pumps inside the intake bay. Those pump up to the wetland filter and then that water filters up through rocks and gravel beneficial bacteria and then as that happens that water gets cleaned and then also aerated through a series of waterfalls that then flows back down into the pond
too early in the morning for a cigar. <laughs> Didn't just... George Burns lived to be like 98 <laughs> okay. years old. What's the plan for today? Did you meet Billy? Oh no. This is, this is uh, Bildo. <laughs> <laughs> Can't win. This is <laughs> Billy Harmon. He's out of Galveston. Uh, Texas City by Galveston. Close Whatever, enough. Same, same difference. Yeah. So he came out here about a year ago when we built this massive pond and all this stuff. And he was like hunting us down, right? He literally, I think he just <laughs> showed you. up. I found he him. Found he just showed up. And we normally don't do that. We normally have guys out yeah, here that we not, know. Yeah, you know, like he was like a lost puppy. Like right. waiting at the gate. <laughs> <laughs> he showed up and he really proved himself. And that's why he's back out here again. Because he's a super hard worker. Extremely talented. He's out here giving us a hand with this custom fountainscape. Which brings me to what we're doing today. Yeah. Yep. Let me show you. Billy, why he takes us over there? Brothers Water Garden? Brothers Water Garden. Brothers Water Garden. And what's the YouTube channel? Brothers Water Garden. Brothers Water Garden. It's awesome. <laughs> so yesterday, we powered through. We got our reservoir installed. This is about 1,200 gallons of water storage. We've got two pump vaults here that are going to house three 90L pump. Each pump moves anywhere from like seven to 8,000 gallons an hour. we got plenty of water to work with, which is good because we've got a lot of things going on here. This is the bottom section to the custom eight-foot stack slate urn. We're using this bottom section. We're going to create a ribbon style, almost like falling rain out of this. We're going to be slicing this up. Maybe like a three quarters of this will have water raining out of it. We'll probably do some rock work in here. Maybe add some aquatic plants. And then from there, we've got some beautiful Texas moss rock over here we're going to be using to create waterfalls, cool outcroppings. And then we're going to build up to this section here where the rest of the urn is. Let me show you how big it is still with that bottom <laughs> of this thing. That piece over there is the bottom third. I love this thing. <laughs> it's five feet radius circumference. Yeah, it's a five foot diameter. Uh, diameter. diameter. Yep. It was one of those. <laughs> and it's still about five feet tall. Yep. So we're going to build this up just about a couple inches below that rock that's in the driveway there. So in reality, this is going to come up like that much higher. We're just going to put it like up yep. here. So it's still going to give us the eight foot effect. And then what we're going to do, since this is going to be putting out a lot of water, we're going to run a big three inch pipe up in here and we're going to reduce it down to the top so we can get it pushing out like a jet. Probably this high, right? Yep. Very similar to what we did over in the other ones, just kind of making it more visible from the top. Uh, and then we've got this three watt light. We're actually going to drill into the top of this countersink it. So at night, that huge column of water will be all lit. It's going to look like it's on fire. It's going to be amazing. Yeah. But what we've got to do is we don't want water coming off this whole thing. We're going to be super close to the house here. So back in this section right here, we're actually going to take some of the foam. We're going to foam up a dam right here. And then we're going to create it like a planting area. We'll probably have some holes in it. We could put some plants in there, let it grow over the back. This way, we're just having water flowing from here forward, which yep. then controls our splash, makes it so that it's actually possible to have it here close to the house. And then we just start touching it up with all these beautiful rocks and making some cool waterfalls it's gonna be amazing it's gonna be amazing so the biggest challenge jack billy and i are having with this is really the size of everything so you have this eight foot urn with a five foot diameter we have boulders that are anywhere from four feet tall to yeah. six feet wide let me show you the boulders like so we've got this massive massive rocks the texas moth rock it's beautiful and but it's huge it's huge look at the size of these things and so we want these because they're to scale with the size of the urn and it's really important that we have stone scale to the size of an eight foot urn. But it also, when I look at the girth of some of these rocks, they're taking up half of the reservoir. So we have to strategically put these things in there to allow us not just to fit the rocks and build waterfalls, but leave room for the urns, leave room for the bowls, leave room for the bottom third. We have all kinds of things going in what used to feel like a big space. And now it's becoming tighter and tighter. So the challenge is just making sure all this stuff fits in there and it blends well. And so we're going to take you through that process today. And really what I want to share with you guys is just kind of what we're mentally thinking over and over. So every time we set another rock or two, we'll come back, I'll get Jack or myself to kind of talk about the thought process with the design. Hang on tight, it's gonna be a fun day. got Brad here. We met each other in Puerto Rico this January at one of our networking events, Pondemonium. We call it Ponsimonium. And so we're teaming up to help Ben out and get this project knocked out. So Brad, what do you think about this project so far? Well, it's been a blast here. We're lucky enough that my dad met up with Lamar and Aquascape was able to supply the products. And we've been kicking our butts for the last three days working hard. And my dad's right here, coming over here. He can barely get this guy out of the hole. 
So this is Dave, my dad. We started three days ago on this project and got the guts in. Lamar and his crew is gonna wrap up the final product. But you know, it was a great time. And uh, if you guys, guys are interested in this, any CAC in your area uses the same Aquascape products and processes to get it done. If you wanna check us out on YouTube, we release a video every Friday at 4 p.m. for Pondscapes of Charlotte. I know Lamar's got a channel too, of course Aquascape, but what do you think about this project? My wife told me not to talk, let Brad do the talk. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it's, well, it's, he's, it's he's hard. He's a funny we, guy. We've been working hard and we got a lot done, but Lamar, you got a lot to do, brother. Yeah. Yep. You got a lot of work to do. We're going to be here finishing up, Good. so we're going to bring it over to Ben and basically follow up with the why behind this project. Yeah, so we're going to use this pond for a lot of things. One of the best things, though, is going to be first for the capybaras, so they can have a nice cool place whenever it gets to be 105 degrees here in Texas. It doesn't evaporate immediately. And then also, we've had this pond here for a long time. It's just been green. Now we can finally have a beautiful filtered pond. We can have rescued waterfowl, either domestic or wild with permits. Yeah, we can train to eat if we need to release them to get back into the wild. If we put minnows in here, if they're diving ducks or if they're cranes or egrets, they can be trained to attack uh, fish in the water. And then if they're domestic ducks, they'll have a nice little place to stay. But you can only have one or the other, right? You can't mix the domestic duck with the wild one. So when we do wildlife rehab, we'll be able to net this whole place in. Uh, and then this will be a top-notch facility in Texas for it. I don't know any other rehabbers that have a, a set up like this where they can keep a close eye with restricted mobility on uh, wildlife to be rehabilitated in a little setting like this. So stay tuned for the finished product, you guys. I'm really looking forward to it and I'm really looking forward to giving Greg Woodstock all, all of this dirt here. Hello from Aqualand. It is the Pond Guy, and I have not been on Team Aquascape vlog since March, the beginning of March. I've been gone from the office, my office at Aqualand for 59 days, which in 32 years of running Aquascape, that is the longest that I've ever been away from my home. And what I love about coming back, first of all, I'm in the spring, which means this is the first time today when the water is over 50 that I get to feed my beautiful koi. At Aqualand, everything is waking up. You can see how pretty the plants look. It's been awesome for me to feel that I've been part of my team following the journey. So I'm really interested in what you guys think about this year's vlogs, which is a week in the life of Aquascape instead of only project focused. Man, I feel that I have not been disconnected from my team by watching every week what Team Aquascape is doing. And it's been fun to see and I'm super excited. Now I have one more job where I head back to Utah and that's to go on the roof and help transplant some baby geese. So which one of you guys is gonna run defense? Trevor? I got it. Just like that. What's up guys? So we're up here on the green roof. As you might have seen in Ed's videos, we spent a lot of time and effort getting this roof up to par. We've done our best to try and deter them, these different silver shiny things up here. Obviously it's not working because they made a nest right next to two of those guys. So we're trying to do our best, but yeah, hopefully we can get these baby geese off the roof safely. Now the moms will follow us down and we do this every year and sometimes they get adopted by another one. But if we don't do this, sometimes they fall off the roof and the edge and don't make it into the pond. So bringing them down to the pond, look at how cute they are though. So they're scared, so we'll get them down there quick. The moms will fly down and get reunited with their babies. Come on guys. First time in the water. Good morning, everybody. Yesterday, we really got at it. It actually doesn't look like it, but we made some really good progress. We've got two days left and plenty to do. We still have to run all of our plumbing. We have to figure out the lights. We have to figure out some other fountainscapes. So let's just look at it from here. I'll kind of explain the waterfall. So the waterfalls are gonna come off of this rock here. Some of it should fall this way. Some of it should fall that way. Then obviously, we got this big flat one rock. We set this one to split water. Water's gonna come around, drop off of this. First rock we set was this this big 
good guy. He's always the one that kind of sets the pace for everything. It's kind of the foundation rock that goes in. Once we set that, we realized that this bottom part of the eight foot urn, instead of sitting closer here, was gonna look better pushed up there. That allowed us to get more ribbons coming off all the way around and gave us more space here in the foreground to do some other boulder work, so on and so on. After we set that one, we said, all right, now we're looking for a larger stone next to our waterfall stone that could frame this out. We didn't have anything tall enough that was skinny. And what I mean by that is if I had a rock this tall, it also came all the way out to here and went clear out to here. It was almost too big. It was going to take up all of the space. So we said, why don't we just drop in a flat one here, build up back behind it, and then set another rock. Then the division adapted to allow water to split around that. Where then we set these two right in here to get up to the same level as that. So we'll get two waterfalls coming down there. It'll split around this, drop down here. After we set those, we started looking at this one. We said it looked a little plain, so we dropped this big giant one in in front of it, which takes away a lot of the face of that rock, but looks so much more natural. I love the way that water's gonna drop off of this, hit this, roll off the side. We'll still get a drop here and a little drop back over in there. And with two five designs, we should be really good. Then we dropped in our big urn, gave us the height that we needed. We played around with the placement of that, whether it was a foot to the left, two feet to the right. We all agreed that that was the best location. After we set that, we dropped in this big guy to help scale that down, what both Jack and I love. Well, we'll just ask Jack. We were saying it yesterday. What was your favorite part about that big urn back in there? Just realizing that I really love the sound of your voice in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> My favorite part. One of the things that you and I talked about was we've seen quite a few of these installed now. There's, there was 13 of them. And I think a lot of the mistakes that are maybe making is you're just sticking it out there by itself. Mm -hmm. And it just needs to be surrounded by big boulders. And that's why we brought in these big rocks or Matt did. Give it some scale. And now it's just kind of nestled in yeah. there. And when that other side is closed in, it's going to really complete the look. So it's not off by itself. It, it makes sense in the water feature. It's a cohesive part of the whole design. So what do we got left to do today? We're on Wednesday now. We're day yep. three. We got five days. We have to get this right side done. So Billy's going to get going on building this retaining wall. This retaining wall is actually a crucial part of the design because it's going to be holding up this waterfall section you just talked about. It's going to be holding up that top pool so that we can do rock work and make it all drive and leave some planting areas. So Billy's going to get that done this morning. You and I will probably drop a couple more rocks around this big urn and then just kind of finish things up by placing lights. We have to get the plumbing in that thing yeah. before we get too far ahead of ourselves. Plumbing and that's got to get filled up with some stone. It's going to need, I'd say you're going to probably lose a, a yard of gravel in there and what that's going to do is just give us that ballot, hold that thing in place. Yeah. What's so cool about any of these urn features is they're manageable. You can yeah. move them almost by hand, which means they're not very stable if they're just left by themselves. So we're going to fill it up with some gravel, get some ballast, and we are going to kick butt, get this right side done so then we can go here tomorrow. So we're going to get in here, get more boulders in here, some big ones, especially over on the side here, making that really field nestled in there, helps scale that thing down, make it feel like it's part of the rock family in here. We've got some bib lining to do over in here. We've got a couple little things we want to tweak on this stone. We really, really want to get water to come off this part of the stone. And in order to do that, we're going to have to back some stuff up over here. We might even have to chip away a little bit at the rock. We'll see. We'll get that figured out. But we got to get that done. I've got some of the bib lining done. I got some in here. We did all the bib lining back and through here. We're going to need lights back up and through these areas, down and through here, and then light this thing up quite a bit. I'd even like to get some of the rock set over in here. And I think what'll happen, this will be very organic over here. Neither one of us, well, maybe he does. We probably don't know exactly where those bowls are going to sit just yet. We're going to probably drop a rock in and it'll come to us. Like, ooh. Well, this actually changed. This changed over here because yep. we were going to have. This was up gonna, here. This was going to be over here. Yep. But then as we looked at it, we're like, it just looks so good tucked in here. Yeah. So now we're going to bring the waterfall on this side. So we have this to contend with, right? We're going to have to do some blocking here, which is going to be our frame rock for this part. We're going to actually use this as a frame rock. So that's going to be framing one side of the waterfall. So we'll probably do a, a waterfall stone, like maybe two feet wide. Yeah, we're just going to have to be careful because what we don't want to do, Jack, mm -hmm. is get up higher again than that curb. Right. The only thing is on this side, we got a bit more room to work with. Yeah. So if we did get up higher, it wouldn't be the end of the world, but that would mean we got to be like down here with the waterfall, Yeah. which would be fine because that gives us more waterfall back here. Yeah. And that's some of the things you have to like, we'll get so excited about stuff like this would be great. And we're like, crap. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> with this. So that's the organic part of building water features. So we'll see how close we stick to right now our perceived vision on this. I know every single time we set a single rock, it starts changing a little bit. I think a lot of times, Jack, and you know this, when you try to build a waterfall off of a really set vision, you can be handcuffed all day. We, we had it. We had a set vision. Yeah. And it's, it's gone. Yeah. <laughs> this gets moved. This gets moved. We knew the big urn was going over there. We knew these were the pieces we wanted to work with. It's They're, good to start with an idea. Yeah. But then the 
these rocks show up and Matt selected these rocks you know I was on, on a video call with him when he did it and I can't tell like looking at my screen sure. but they're awesome they're awesome now that we see them and how big they're like okay a little bit of change of plans let's figure out how we're gonna scale this because we could easily get ourselves pinned into a corner with all these big rocks and I think with you and I kind of working together and looking at things really objectively like always jumping back there seeing how it looks and then come back and be like nope that's not gonna work yep. I think that's where the experience comes in we also have to pay attention to what we've got left to work with just because we want to do a waterfall at 10 12 inches high doesn't really mean these rocks are going to allow that to happen all the rock we have left is huge huge stuff so we're going to kind of let the rock dictate what happens next but as always you guys just hang on tight hopefully you enjoy this Oh my God. Woo, that was a tough one. <laughs> Back out here, we're working on this thing. You guys, some incredible stuff happened today. We didn't get nearly as far as we wanted, but I wanted to show you where we got. I think you're gonna love this. There's that urn, you guys remember that. I believe we got that rock set. We got that big rock back and behind there. We got this huge one, which I just love. I love the size of this one. We got that one back in there and then some of these. And then we decided to do this wall and it was a big momentum shift, but it's gonna be one of my favorite parts of the whole thing just because of the detail so because we raised this up so much here's my water level based off of that rock water comes up then all of this has to be retained out here and you can see that the drive is considerably lower well you can't but trust me in the fact that the driveway is considerably lower than that rock so we built this wall and I think it just looks amazing I love the stone cap we've got on here I love the way the rocks kind of cantilever out over it are cut into it it just looks so cool so we built this wall all all the way around to this side. That big rock cut in there. Still love this guy, the way it's terraced down. So this consumed two of us for a big portion of the day and then having to do all kinds of stuff with the liner back and behind here. So we got all of this edge work done and through here, that set up this big rock and it's hitched this way. So when that thing turns on and it splashes all over this, that water can roll back inside. We got this big one to, again to help scale that down. And then we're gonna fill in gravel back behind there. I'll take care of all that stuff tomorrow. Jack and Billy are gonna work on the rest of this section over here. So we've got Thursday and Friday to kind of button up that section. So I think we're in good shape. Ooh, sorry, I'm bouncing around, but I'm tired. Up. I was hoping there'd be more algae. I'm a little disappointed. Would you want me to get into the full review right now? You know, let's go ahead and just jump right to it. Okay. <laughs> so, what are your thoughts seeing everything, Ben? Everything's phenomenal. I'm very thankful. This is going to be more than what we need for the wildlife rehab. It's going to be more than what we need for the capybaras or any of the domestic waterfowl that we get or the wild waterfowl. It's going to be more than enough. And this is a much better facility than our local zoo has. So, this is going to be really great now for having all that wildlife and, and, and the capies. They're going to be very happy. Awesome. Well, we're just excited. Excited. We're excited to be a part of Aquascape, be able to help Ben out. This is the crew here. Sean, Zane, Preston, Dalton, down here in Texas. Ben from Urban Rescue Ranch, signing out.
very much for this beautiful merch. I love it. And the hat. Every day, every night, I'll be sleeping with this hat on. Thank you, Greg. Guys, we got the wall done. I just love the way this thing turned out. Carving those big boulders in place. The natural stone cap on top. It just looks so good. goes in to create something one of a kind like this. It's amazing that it took us five days to create something like this and two weeks to create something like that big one over there. Actually four total weeks to do that. The reason it becomes challenging on something like this is because we're working in such a confined area. We're working in a confined area with major, major elements behind us. That's the top third of an eight foot urn. And so when placing something like that, we're thinking of so many different things. How does it tie into scale with the house? What about the splash? What about the size of the boulders? Making sure that we have room for all those big rocks what's the water flow gonna be like making sure that everything in there fits and it's really like creating a detailed detailed puzzle without a picture to go off of so we have to create that final picture ourselves and in our minds working with Jack is always such a pleasure because we share a vision we feed ideas off of each other all the time we inspire each other to get better and then with customers like Matt it makes it a whole lot easier so if you remember when we built this thing those different rocks that we put in here that was number one then number two was placing this bottom bottom part, the bottom third of our eight foot spear. We always knew we were gonna come in and kind of do what I'm calling the dress type look coming off of that. Once we set that, then we looked at this and we said, well, that was gonna be a waterfall, but it was probably just gonna dribble off the surface. So we came in here and we dropped in this big flat rock. After that one, we dropped in this one back up in here, knowing that we would then slip the water around this and then feeding those little stair step falls over in there. After that, we set some of these guys. Then we came in, we dry set the spear dropped in that boulder then got some major boulders set in behind it this one and this one then we had to come in and build this wall to retain everything which is really ending up being one of my favorite parts of the entire project i just love the way it all turned out we're keeping in mind the splash you can see the whole wall is totally dry but this is getting just enough water to hopefully encourage the moss and lichens on here to grow same with the backside over there the other thing we did with this urn because we were super worried we didn't have enough room to move that urn this way we didn't have enough room to move the urn that way we definitely couldn't move it forward because then it would have been too close to the proximity of these waterfalls so we had to push it back as far as we possibly could when we pushed it all the way back there of course the splash was going to end up hitting the house or causing leaks and going outside the liner so we just came up on top and foamed in a bunch of aquatic plants up there to create a natural looking dam that keeps that water from splashing over to the backside. as this thing matures those plants are just going to end up cascading down this thing and hanging off the backhand side after we did all of that then we came in here and we started playing around with these bowls another part i really love is the way that bowl falls into that little pocket there before it comes back down and then this bowl just fits right in between the cracks of all those and then check out this bottom waterfall taking advantage of the natural contours of almost a toilet bowl type looking rock water comes in from the right from back behind from the left all comes together and then feeds right down into the bottom of the surface came back in added some height we got these big crepe myrtles coming in here they'll have to trim those things and hopefully encourage that canopy to kind of hang more out this way which will just add more and more to this feature Yeah, buddy. Another one. Another one. Another amazing time. Like, more than the water feature we built, I love the time I get to spend hey, with you. Hey, buddy. Hey. I, I love it. Aw. Yeah. Matt's so awesome. He trusts us to do whatever we want to do. I love working with you. We share a vision. We inspire each other. Can't wait to do it again. Where are we off to next? Should we tell him? Yeah, tell him. We're going to Australia. Hey! <laughs> Literally, that's as far as we can go to build a pond. Like, that. I think the yeah. moon is next. That yeah. Means, I don't know where else we go from here. <laughs> All right, guys. Tell us your favorite part of this. I know mine. Tell us yours. Jack, can't wait to see you in Australia. That's going to be epic. See you guys.